يا لي مداد يا لي مداد thank you for Jasmine I was like can you hear me yes we can hear you يا لي مداد يا لي مداد زبون ما يا لي مداد thank you for joining شكر مولا نو شكر مولا شكر مولا so welcome all friends and we are very blessed to be gathered today inshallah we all will celebrate maula salgira and it is truly imam's mercy that we are on the path of learning his knowledge so we can enter into the journey of his recognition this book is a special book because it talks about the holy quran and the light of imamat and today we are planning to talk about chapter 95 of the quran surah 3 its tawil we are going to discuss so let us say some prayers to maula baba that ya maula meherban ya maula meherban we humbly are gathered here to seek your knowledge maula so we can get to your recognition maula Ya Mola Meherban, through the barakat of your salgira, Mola, please, Mola, forgive our sins, Mola, elevate our ranks, Mola, and Mola, let us help us, Mola, so we recognize you, Mola. Ya Mola Meherban, remove all the hurdles and difficulties, Mola, on our way to get close to your nur, Mola. Ya Mola Meherban, Ya Mola Meherban, madad farma, madad farma, mushkil kusha Meherban, Mola. مدد فرما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so you are able to see my screen this is surah 3 and in this chapter which we are studying on people of zikr this is under the chapter we are discussing the people of zikr and we have understood the zikr word is actually used for quran itself zikr is used for pagambers zikr is used for imam the word zikr in reality means remembrance so when we are today doing this zikr ilmi zikr we are in remembrance and when we are studying quranic verses we have realized we have established we have understood that the light of imamat and the quran are inseparable the light of quran and imam are inseparable imam is the one who is the divinely appointed teacher of the quran imam is the one who teaches us tawil Imam is the one who guides on the path of Sirat al-Mustaqim. When we talk of Ummah, there are common people and there are chosen people. And the talimat is exoteric and esoteric, tanzili form and tawili form. And look at this sentence which is here and I'm going to read that. The exoteric and esoteric guidance of God is given according to their struggle and merit so if we are seeking this talimat tawili talimat it is given to those according to their riyazat their mehnat their struggle and merit nobody is born with this merit people have to work hard and we are talking about us najis we are not talking about imaman and prophets when we seek this knowledge it depends on our struggle and our hard work how much time we are investing to learn and then we do that there will be no obstacle in our path path of recognition of our own self how amazing is that we thought that we are on the path of recognition of our imam but in reality it is the recognition of our own soul now the question would be what does it mean our own soul or soul of imam what is this recognition of what and who 
we will have to realize that we as human we have come to this world but we are connected to that higher soul and there are very many terminologies we take number one we say we are here in lower eye and he is in alam -e ulvi in the higher world in higher eye and that is higher eye we are lower eye in alam -e sifli the lower world we also say that we are holding on to the rope the lower part is here we are holding and then he is up high it is actually in the recognition of our own soul when we are holding that rope is the recognition of his so it is one and the same but when we walk on the path we always say mola we want to recognize you because we want to be humble and we do want to call ourselves nachis we do not want to go into any kind of pride so we always say mola we want to recognize you and mola ali says to us man arfa nafsihi faqad arfa the one who recognizes themselves will recognize the lord but for us for nachis we always say that we want to recognize you mola baba when we recognize you we will recognize how we are connected to you too so alhamdulillah the recognition is dependent on our mehnat wa riyazat our struggle and the merit that we will get to that recognition and one may say oh it is very difficult we cannot do that we don't know this we don't know that but allah says in quran that he has not laid upon you any hardship in religion when we read that we have struggle we struggle it doesn't feel like it meaning that the potential we have in our being the soul we have in our being we have not used that potential to get to that recognition we have used that potential to be somebody in the world we all are successful living very comfortable life alhamdulillah but we have somehow not used that potential to recognize him in reality he has not put any hardship upon us you know allah is merciful Imam does not put test upon us which we cannot pass. He does not burden our soul more than we can tackle. Especially us being smileys who has the majiza of isma azam with us. Imam blesses us with the isma azam. Those who have isma azam they are very powerful. They are blessed with a very powerful key. for them it is not difficult it is not at all difficult when we enter in quran we enter with his nur with his isma azam all the doors will start opening because we have the key with us so when we study quran we don't understand it and this chapter is one of the very beautiful example because when we look at the allegories allah is talk swearing actually allah qasam khata hai injil ki injir ki he is swearing by fig and olive and mount sinai why would allah swear by things and plants places and plants why it does not make sense meaning we are looking at tanzil when we look at tanzil it will not make sense to us only those who are blessed with the understanding of the tawili meaning of this chapter will be able to understand that what are the hidden secrets of imam in this chapter in the form of this chapter this book is telling us that it is a practical example for us to see that how revelation does not make any sense we do need the tawil to be understand how imam is helping us to walk on the path imam is helping those true mu'minins with the light of tawil those who work hard and walk on this path and one such example is of pir sayyidna nasir khusro who was born sunni 
became the student of a dai, dai al muayyid fi din shirazi. When he meets the imam, immediately, one day that, he becomes a peer. And in today, if you look at the smiley world, if we have 25 million smileys, 25 million smiley, I think 22 to 23 millions are smileys made by Pir Nasir Khusra. And only 2 millions or so are the smileys from Pir Sadardin's tradition. So majority of the smiley world is actually followers of Pir Nasir Khusra's tradition who became smiley with the knowledge of Quran. Alhamdulillah, we are not far behind. We are learning too, we are growing too, and His mercy is, is with us. So let's come back to this chapter. 95 by 1. It says, by the fig and the olive. Allah is swearing by the fig and the olive. And then He says, by Mount Sinai. And then He says, and by the secure city. In Arabic, it says Al Amin. It is from Aman. It is from Aman, secure or peaceful city. So Allah is swearing by these four things two are plants and two are places. So why would Allah swear by minerals and vegetables and then places? These are insignificant, these are lifeless things. So Allah Sahib gives us the taweel of fig. And of course, it is from Pir Nasir Khusro's book, Wajedin, that his reference, he is given as the reference. The fig actually is a fruit which is alluded here to universal intellect. Now, question would be here, why would Allah say, take the example of fig as universal intellect? Universal intellect, which is the highest, most rank in hudud deen which is connected to kalma kun divine word to be, and it became, which was universal intellect. Without any intermediary, universal intellect is connected, linked with the word kun. When Allah did this intention, this irada of kun to be, it became, and it was universal intellect. So universal intellect is taken here as fig. Why fig? If you were to look at the injil fruit, you'll be very shocked that the whole injil, the inside and the outside, one can eat it. There is no waste in this fruit. In reality, there is no waste in this fruit. So what are we saying here? Why universal intellect? In reality, we are talking about Shakarim. Shakarim, who is the Imam of this time, and everything is encompassed within the Imam. All these ranks are encompassed within the Imam. Imam is such that there is no waste. Imam is such that there is no waste. Imam is noor, in and out, top to bottom. He is just noor, noor, and noor. And through that noor, we got the isme azam. We have to remember that. We'll come back to isme azam a little bit later. So when we talk of this fruit, injir, in which there is no waste, inside and outside one can eat and get the nutrition, become nourished. What is that nourishment that we seek? What is that nourishment we seek? You know, when we are in this physical body, and Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah says that bring your soul out so you can get to him, you can fly to him, his noor. But then he says, you cannot do that. You need Nurani Badan for it. Nurani Badan is the subtle body. Subtle body is needed for us to become one with him. And when we walk on the path of Riyazat or Ibadat, we are actually in this process of converting our dense body, cell by cell, particle by particle, into subtle body, 
become that noor, become that light that can fly, bring the soul out so we can meet with him. He who is above else, and that is what we are learning about fig. The second example is of olive. Now olive we do know from Ayah Noor that it is a pure virgin oil. The example of oil here is taken alluded to universal soul. Now universal soul without favors, universal soul accepts the favors without an, any intermediary from universal intellect. And it is compared to olive. Why? Because when we talk of soul, we have some souls who work very hard, who become pure, they become light, they become subtle, they work hard in the ibadat or riyazat, and they become pure with the ibadat and tabidari, farman bardari. They get to that level where Imam wants to see us. However, there are some souls who stay negligent, ignorant, and they never pay attention. Quran says that there are people who do have intellect, but they choose to stay blind. Those are such like they are throwaway. In olive, when we talk of olive itself, we have oil from it and the pulp. And some of it is to be thrown away. So those souls are being referred as those who do not become knowledgeable because the first step is ilmul yakin. The first step is ilmul yakin. Mola has said, ilm wali ru darja ba darja upar chalti. Ilm wali ru darja ba darja upar chalti hai. So first step is knowledge. When we don't have knowledge, we will remain ignorant. Then there are darjat too, that when we get the knowledge, but we don't want to work hard, then again we are in trouble. So at every step, there is a choice which has to be made. Either we stay in two boats or one boat. If we believe in Imam, we completely believe in Imam. We don't stay in doubts. And we, when we want to remove those doubts, it can be removed through knowledge. So knowledge is extremely important. With Isma Azam, with Riyazat or Ibadat. Remember that Isma Azam is very important. Without Ibadat, we may not be ever here. The reason we are here, it is the blessings of Isma Azam. So, all if some is kept and other is thrown away. And we understand it is about those souls which are purified versus those souls who remain, who choose to follow their Nafse Amara their own desires, instant gratification. I want this and I want that. I like this and I have to have that. There is no Riyazat concept. There is no sacrifice concept. That soul will remain at a level of animal soul. Human soul is a rational soul. Human uses logic to elevate itself, to go up to become one with the Holy Spirit. But those who follow the nafs amara they will remain the, at the level of animal soul. So when we read this paragraph, it talks about souls who are deserving to be rewarded. And there are some who get to punishment. Why? Very important fact that we do know there is going to be hereafter. There is going to be accounts. Our accounts will be checked. Our book of deeds will be seen. When we don't believe that, we are not worried about it. And that knowledge, that understanding with love and affection, with Imam's love and affection comes through knowledge. We are not talking about fear here. Please remember that. It is to do with love and only love of the Imam that we become 
very vigilant, cautious that our book of deed looks pretty because we love our Imam because we want to be with him. All this Riyazat or Ibadat is not done with the fear. It is done with the law. Imam is here to guide us, to help us, but he can only guide those who, he can only help those who are willing to take the step forward. Then the third uh, thing which Allah swears by is Mount Sinai. This is a mountain we are talking about. Mountain actually is allegorically used for Akad. Here in this chapter, it is being alluded for Natik. Natik meaning the major prophet like Prophet Muhammad. Natik is the one who accepts the favor of universal soul hiddenly and conveyed it to the people of the world by the way of Shariat and appointed the Asas. So let's take an example to understand this. Prophet Muhammad used to go to Gare Hira to do his ibadat of Isme Azam. He was given this revelation by Jibrail, read by the name of your Lord. And that's how he got the revelation. And he had brought the Shariat, Shariat meaning all the laws of that time brought by Prophet Muhammad. But the Tawili meaning was given to us by the Asas of that time and that was Maulali. So in every prophet's time, major prophet's time, there is always the Asas. There is always the Asas who gives the Talimat of Tawil to the people. So Mount Sinai, why example of Mount Sinai? When we look at the mountain, it may look ugly, it may look rough and dark, and it may not be pleasant to our eyes, but when we look inside it, meaning when we get the pearls and jewels and silver and gold and brass and whatnot, copper, all are hidden in the mountain, which seemingly looks ugly, dark, and rough. When we look at the Quran, when we look at the Shariat, when we look at the revelation, it does not make sense. It seems very illogical. But when we talk of Asas who gives us the Talimat of Tawil, it makes sense. Today, what we are studying is Tawil and we are enjoying the Tawil. But if we were to read this chapter without Tawil, it will go just above our head. We will not understand it. So the next verse, the third verse talks about peaceful city, the secure city. Now, very interestingly, the translator here is saying Makkah, but it is nothing to do with Makkah. When you look at the Tanzil, yes, you will think of a physical city, but the Tawil says it different. Tawil refers to a, uh, the Asas. The Tawili meaning of the secure city is Asas. And the Asas of Prophet Muhammad was Mawla Ali. So Mawla Ali is that city of Aman, Aman Wala Shahar. Those who enter in this city, meaning at the Bayat of Mawla Ali, will find the peace. Those who accept Mawla Ali will find the peace. Meaning, they will be able to get the Tawili ilm. They will be able to understand the deeper meanings. And when they work on that deeper meaning, do the Riyazat or Ibadat, what will happen? They will get to the recognition of that city that is the Asas Imam. So those who are wise, those who are Akalmand, as Mola Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah says, Mansur was Akalman. Therefore, he walked on the path of Marifat. He wanted to find the essence. He wanted to get to the recognition. And this path is only for those who are Akalman. Only those who are wise will find this peace. What is that peace? Their doubts will be cleared. 
they will not stay stuck in the tanzil because imam is going to give them the knowledge of tawil all the doubts will be clarified will be removed all the confusion will be removed ambiguity of zahiri talimat will be removed and they will have certainty of knowledge and they will be the ones who will be able to fight the nafse amara and get to the nafse lawama nafse lawama the nafs which is from imam the conscientious soul they will definitely find peace and satisfaction their heart will be in satisfaction so allah here swears by four things two were plants and two were places and we understand the two plants are alluding to universal intellect and universal soul whereas places are natik and asas so in above mentioned verses spiritual and physical fruits is felt only by those who eat them how interesting it is so when we talk of fig and olive these are referring to spiritual beings universal intellect and universal soul we cannot see them we cannot see them they are spiritual beings in hudud e din ranks there are spiritual ranks and there are physical ranks so when we talk of example of fig and olive which is universal intellect and universal soul these are spiritual beings these are spiritual ranks which we cannot see just like we cannot see our soul and intellect we cannot see it but its expression we can see and very interestingly allama sahib says that fig and olive is one word it is one state which is a hidden state which is a spiritual state whereas when we talk of mount sinai and secure city peaceful city these are two words meaning there are two states these two ranks are having the soul as well as body natik like prophet muhammad had a soul and he was physically there in the physical world maulali had a soul and he was a physically there in physical world so there are two states here two words two states i hope you are enjoying this because when we do in depth study it is so amazing that the number of words also has tabi everything has tawil the deeper we go the amazing journey the joy is so powerful that just we want to just study this and nothing else do nothing in the life but this but we got to do work to right we do got to live to but this is such a full of joy journey that it is like our intellect gets so stimulated that wow i had never seen it like that and when we are start we start feeding our intellect we never want to stop we want to continue to feed it all the time and that is the beauty of learning the tawili knowledge so let us go further and look at the other verses so this verse chap same chapter 95 verse 4 it talks about we have certainly created man in the best of stature asan e taqweem the word taqweem here means straighten up on the right path on the ladder being evolving it's a ladder it's an order it's an arrangement so in simple words let's keep it on a ladder asan e asan e taqweem the word taqweem means ladder so there is a ladder on which allah has created man and that ladder allah says actually it is in the best of stature ehsan e taqweem khuda ne insaan ko behtareen surat mein paida kiya what is that behtareen what is that best of stature we have soul and we have intellect 
physically we look whatever however does not matter but the beauty the Manala says that he has made humans as his best creation ashraful makhluka it is simply because we have intellect because souls animals do have too it's a lower level of soul our soul is called rational soul because we are blessed with intellect animals are given instincts so allah has given best of stature and we have come to this world in other words when we say ahsan al taqweem and we are saying ladder meaning that we are evolving we are climbing the ladder we are progressing we are on the path of progression and the fifth verse says then we return him to the lowest of the low as safala safilin as safala safilin lowest of the low now these two verses kind of seems opposing he said he sent humans as asafal safali the best of stature then he returns to the lowest of the low how and why ya mola mercy interestingly allah is telling us that we do have this intellect we do have this potential but when we don't seek the knowledge we don't have this ilmul yaqeen we can never get to seeing that yaqeen anul yaqeen is to be seen with our eyes are we talking about physical eyes not at all physical eyes will see the ilm but when we say anul yaqeen the certainty of i that is in our batin when our batni sense is open up when our batni eyes open up then we are able to see all of it in our batin when we have isma azam when we do ibadat and we have knowledge too meaning that we have both the oars so what happens our kanu moves forward when it continues to move forward with riyazat o ibadat ilm o amal our batni eyes open up but then there are those remember we talked about olive having pulp some is thrown away those who choose to remain ignorant will not be able to move forward why because they were happy at the level of animal soul following their instinctual desire being the slave of the nafs e amara our peers have said man ne maru to guru kahe man ne malo that man is the nafs e amara until we are not going through the riyazat o ibadat of killing the nafs e amara or transforming the nafs e amara into nafs e lawama the soul which is conscientious it's a higher level of soul then only we will be able to go further because that conscientious soul keeps her keeps us awake alert and directing towards the guidance of the imam and then only we can be at the best of stature meaning we are on the ladder climbing up but there are some who choose to become asafal safilin lowest of the low allah is the malik of ladder allah is the malik of the ladder surah maraj in that he says that i am the lord of the ladder and he has sent us the guide in this physical world and that is why we are reading this book the holy quran and the light of imam they both are connected when we seek our path in the light of imam we are on the ladder the question is how many of us are working hard to climb up the ladder our prophet muhammad reached to miraj that is the example that he was also doing the ibadat of isma azam and whatever majizat he saw it is not limited to him actually imam sultan mamma shah says that if you want to become peer or pagamber you can become so it is possible for mustajib to and we have beautiful example of adam who was a simpleton mustajib 
because of his riyazat o ibadat he became the khalifa of allah he became the janashin of allah because he did honest ibadat honest ibadat the next verse says except for those so allah says that we return him to the lowest of the low except for those who believe and do righteous deeds for they will have a reward uninterrupted now this is amazing amazing uninterrupted so when we start climbing up on the ladder you know what happens truly he gives us his hand come on continue to come up and we climb up the ladder uninterrupted we don't don't stop the first step is upon us our choice has to be there that i do want to climb that ladder i do want to climb up that step and we continue to seek mola please pull me up pull me up he will pull us up but for that we don't become lazy we continue to do our part and he will continue to take us up those who did righteous deeds now remember deeds and true deeds are different if you don't know about that ask navin saiba to share that lecture with you so you can learn what are the different types of deeds but the beautiful reward is uninterrupted that is the mercy of our imam he is so rahman or rahim that we can never say enough shukr guzari to him we just have to make one choice and walk on the path and then he is rahman he will help us he will guide us we do not want to be like those who are ignorant who are happy with their nafs amara with their man then allah says so what yet causes you to deny the recompense there are those who deny that there is hereafter there are those who deny that there is kiamat there is kiamat if we don't accept the kiamat we cannot be climbing up the ladder we do need to recognize the kiamat in our tarika everything is living everything is living those who believe in kiamat those who hope to recognize the kiamat those who do zikr abundantly will be able to get to the mihraj what is that mihraj fana fil imam asal mein wasal that is what we seek that is what we want not after our death our work we will not leave it for others to finish we will do our work during our lifetime what is the beauty when we are dead and we are seeing it we cannot be glowing and sharing our happiness by being with one with the noor nobody we will not be able to share that happiness we want to be one with imam right now so we have we become that light we become that magnet without words without telling anybody anything teaching knowledge sharing knowledge and they all pull towards you as you are the magnet it has to be done during the lifetime if we truly want to enjoy then only we can tell and take our friends and families make them a magnet too make them a light too so they all can be together feeling that happiness and joy in their heart and mind too it has to happen during the lifetime that noor has to be seen during the lifetime and imams dua shes is with us there is no doubt that we cannot we may choose not to that's a different thing asal mein wasal is possible during our lifetime when we take the example of our prophet muhammad he was in nuraniyat in the heavens but physically he was on the planet earth doing his ibadat remember there is a hadith very very important hadith very crucial which is called hadith e nawafil nawafil meaning extra ibadat extra riyazat those who do must must is what three times dua chand raat the sun that is must and let's count ibadat too because alhamdulillah imam has blessed us with his ma'azam okay ibadat but ibadat without the recognition does not help because mawla ali has said 
if I don't see my God, I would not do his ibadat. Do we think he was telling about himself that he would not do ibadat? He's telling us, teaching us that if we do ibadat without the recognition, it's not going to help us. We need the knowledge and the recognition of Imam to do that ibadat, to enjoy that ibadat, to walk upwards in our ladder, to climb up the ladder. So those who deny the Qiyamah, they cannot get there. And the last verse is, is not Allah the most just of the judges? He is Rahman, He is Mehrban. He is truly merciful. But remember that he is just. What do we mean by just here? Remember there are some Jamaati members they would ask that what if Mukhi Sahib has given me Mahadan Ka Chhata and Jamaat has said Ameen any bhul chuk or willingly or unwillingly knowingly or unknowingly all the guna mafi and Jamaat says Ameen my guna will be Maaf and I'll be with, with the Imam. Then that person who worked so hard during their lifetime, did the ibadat, seek the knowledge and worked hard, did the riyazat, was a stupid man. He should have enjoyed the world because Jamaat is going to say the Ameen and the sins will be forgiven. No, it doesn't happen like that. Allah is just those who will work hard, definitely they will be at a higher rank, they will be taken upwards. So remember, all this knowledge and understanding is in the true knowledge, the path of true knowledge. When we do ibadat with this true knowledge, what happens? Truly, our isma azam climbs up the ladder. Our isma azam climbs up the ladder and it gets to our jabin. What is here? Our personal world our personal world. When a Mu'min and Salik continues to climb up the ladder and connects to the Jabeen, Bhamar Gufa, he is in the Dar of the Imam. And then that is the stage where he has reached the destination of becoming one, the lower eye and the higher eye. What does Peer says? That Ito Rahe Murti Lokma that Mormon will live in this physical world, but his dhyan will go to Akash, will go to Imam, he'll be one with the Imam. It used to be lower eye and higher eye. Now it is no more, it is one eye. Aisa fana ha usme jab tu nahi, tab wo sahi hai. Forgive me, there are words here and there, but you get the essence. This is the words from Kalam Mola. Main aur tu ki doi chhod sab ek dek. Aisa fana ha usme jab tu nahi tab wo sahi hai. Right now we say it is lower eye and the higher eye. But if we walk on this path and understand the tawili ilm of Imam, we are capable of becoming one with the Imam. We have that power and the potential. Mawla is Rahman and Rahim. It is not that he has given potential to some less and to some higher. No, we all have same potential. And according to our potential, we will be judged. According to our potential, we will be judged. So we do have the power of becoming one with him. It is our choice to be on ahsan e or become as safal safilin Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we are on the path in the mercy of Imam. He will help us, guide us and take us to the Noor, which is above else all. Alhamdulillah, Shukranillah, Alhamdulillah, Shukranillah, Alhamdulillah. If any friend has any questions. Shukran, Alhamdulillah, I enjoyed this. Shukran. Shukran. I have a question. Ji. Um, so you know when you well, when you said is not Allah the just of the judges, and then you gave the example of Madan Nachanda, it just uh, kind of uh, reminded me to ask. So 
Madan Nachanda, which is given after, you know, if and when it's given by Mukiseb, you are already dead. So, so how are you even asking for forgiveness? It's the other people asking for forgiveness for you, right? Lots of friends ask very many different questions. And this is one of the questions which is being asked that what is the significance of those shatas and those dua and ruhani dua, right? If my sins will be forgiven, why do I need to worry? But we do need to understand that one part is closure for the family. Satisfaction for the family that this is my loved one. You know, it's a hard time when we lose family member. We are grieving and we feel that, oh, we want the best for those departing soul. We need these rituals to have the closure. We need to feel that we are taking care of those Rohani. Rohani is gone. So do not be giving that, taking that as an excuse that, oh, they will say Amin and they will ask for the forgiveness of the soul and I'm done. I'm, I'm one with Imam. It doesn't happen like that. There's a ladder and whatever hard work we have done, we will be on that step. According to one count, there are 50,000 steps, right? Yeah, so that's what I meant, like, you know, Madhya Nashanta, like you said, it's only for the comfort of the family rather than... Thank Everyone. you. Gee, good question, Shamim. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a comment. Gee. It was very good to hear the Tavili knowledge of uh, the Surah. It connects really well. And it's amazing to be able to relate the words like Asfala Safalin and Ahsanat Taqween. It's, it's amazing that we are actually, you know, these words are heard. Like in, in childhood, I feel like we've heard these words, but I never knew what it meant, you know? So it was really good. And then it, it clearly shows that free will is in our hands we decide do we want to go up and then use the same letter to go down where where do we stand it is completely in our hands ways like the path the road the sirat al-mustaqim is exact same and it's there for everyone we choose in what state we want to be so i really like the way you explained um you know, the darjat, like, you know, the, there are spiritual ranks and then there are lower ranks, which are physical in, in this world. And it makes truly sense when we understand the aspect of hudud Like, you know, it gives us hope that shukar alhamdulillah, we are on the ladder and we are mustajib. So shukar alhamdulillah, it, it made, you know, happy, made me happy, shukar. Shukar, Mala. Thank you for you're sharing your thoughts. Thank you. But right. like the free will hai to be like uh, agar aap kuch karte ho to inspire to Allah ki taraf se hi aata hai na. Though it's a free will. That's what I believe. No? It's very interesting. We do not want to do debate here. But remember that inspiration, that guidance is given to whole humanity. Allah says very clearly 17 by 71 that Allah sends guide for every nation and guidance is given to everybody. But those who with their own free will take the step, they will be guided to the path. So we do need to take that, make that first choice. Right, yes, that's what I was trying to say. If we are doing good work, our hearts are clean, then at that time, like, if our choice is not our choice, then it will become our choice. Ban Right. Yes. But it was so good. Thank you so much, Khushali Mubarak, to you and all the participants. Can I just ask a question? Okay. Um, you mentioned the subtle body and you also mentioned a Rouhani body. Can you um explain that in a little bit more like i have heard those uh, things and then 
anyways, I just want a little bit more understanding of those two bodies. We are all in physical body. And we do seek that body that we can unite with Imam. We cannot unite with Imam in the physical body. We do need that Nurani Badan, which Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah talks about in his Farman. And Nurani Badan can only be received by a Mu'min as Salik when all the Riyazat Ibadat is done step by step, transforming particle by particle into subtle body. It's a process. It's a journey. It happens if we are meeting all the criteria. We are on the path of transformation. But sometimes the key point is that if we don't even know what we are trying to do, if we don't know the destination, how can we desire that destination? When we do know that we can be one with that Noor in Nurani Badan, then we need to seek that. Yes, we are getting knowledge. Yes, we are doing the Ibadat of Ismail Azam. But then what kind of dua we are saying? Ya Mola, I am sick. Heal me from my sickness, physically sickness. Or we say, Ya Mola, give me that Nurani Badan which you talk about. Because I don't know how to. You help me, guide me how to get my Nurani Badan. I will do what is my duty. But you know that I'm not capable of getting that Nurani Badan. I don't know. You will give me that Nurani Badan. You are the most powerful. You are the most merciful, Mola. Help me. And particle by particle, this dense body will transform into that subtle body. And in spirituality, these experiences are there. A Mumin Salik experiences that journey. For example, when we are talking about Prophet Muhammad, imagine Prophet Muhammad sitting in Gari Hira doing Ibadat of Isma Azam, which we do at 4 o'clock, right? And then Jibrail comes. When Jibrail comes, how did Prophet Muhammad see him? We cannot see the Noor, his angels, his heavenly angels with physical eyes. How did he see him? Question. Meaning, his Bathni eyes were open. Our Bathni eyes are open? Question. Then, he hears him talk. How did he hear him? With this ears? No, it's not possible. His Bathni ear was open. These are two simple examples of how one can get into transforming the senses into higher senses, into Bathni senses, into subtle senses, so we can see and hear. And it, this journey continues to go on. So I hope this helps. Yes, it helped very much. And then why do some particles get uh, uh, lighted faster than the other light, uh, other uh, particles? Is there like sins or like more darkness or and what determines this darkness? Like I thought if there was light, then uh, all the particles would get, you know, this concept of uh, one by one, but one by one, like how, what, is there a critical mass of light they have to uh, get or understanding before they get lighted, enlightened or whatever? So one simple example in the form of answer I want to give, for example, one particle is lit, okay, and it's transformed into subtle. But what happens when we keep our ears open to, let's say, all types of knowledge, okay? And I gave the example, right, uh, that if our heart is a bowl and we are pouring in that bowl clean water and dirty water. So there is a clean water. When clean water touches the bowl, our heart, that's, that particle became subtle, transformed. But at the same time, we are pouring dirty water too. What will be collected in that bowl? Dirty water, not the clean water. Because that dirty water will impurify the clean water too. 
so that particle of the soul which was lit which was enlightened again will go into darkness and that is why we have the example of bibi maryam bibi maryam is told is said in quran that she protected her ears she did not listen to anything other than true knowledge she did not open up her ears other than the knowledge of the imam taweeri knowledge she protected her ears it can be protection of our ears from those family members or friends who do gibat thoughts which are negative without understanding the logic if we have negative thoughts we will see only negative if we are complaining about something we will never be gratitude having gratitude and all this can add to that impurification so yes that particle got lit at the light but a thought negative thought came in boom the dirty water is now in the bowl and everything became dirty now that particle is again back to so it's back and forth back and forth imam sultan amarsha says it beautifully right he says that if you were to walk one step ahead and then walk back three steps how will you reach to your destination that is the answer let us end here now khushali mubarak to you all friends uh, it was a truly pleasure we i really had fun doing this uh, chapter uh, i hope you enjoyed it too salgira mubarak to you all inshallah tomorrow we will be remembering him tonight tomorrow day time and when we sit in majlis listen to his dua shis in talika it will immediately purify our soul our intellect and bless us and heal us and helps us elevate our ranks amen ya rabbal alamin salagri mubarak thank you yana mata shukran ya ali madad salagri mubarak salagri mubarak thank you ya ali madad ya ali madad salagri mubarak ya ali madad khairiya salagri mubarak